एपिसोड फोर्टीन यार चौदह एपिसोड हो गए जब हम लोग ने ये आईपी के बारे में सोचा था तब सोचा कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा छह एपिसोड बनेंगे एंड नाव यर एड एपिसोड फोर्टीन There's just so much to talk about these beautiful cars or electric cars. Let's discuss the maintenance cost, how easy it is to recycle an EV, current infrastructure, different types of electric motors. But then that's not just enough. There's so much more to talk about these cars. There's another thing that we're going to talk about in this episode is by comparing the normal ICE cars to an electric car with respect to their running costs. Welcome to India's EV revolution. This is Aurelius. This is Aurelius from Mashable India, and let's get this video started. As I mentioned earlier, let's compare the Tigor EV to the normal ICE version of Tigor. Now there's a five lakh rupees of difference between the two. The top spec Tigor is costing around anywhere between eight lakh sixty seven thousand. That's ex showroom. But the Tigor EV, on the other hand, is costing around thirteen lakh thirty nine thousand. That's five lakh rupees of difference. And how do you justify this cost? That is what this video is about. Let's start by talking about the first factor, which is. Electricity or the juice that goes into these cars. This one uses electricity. As EV uses electricity. The petrol car is obviously using the petrol. However, if ever I can justify the time taken by a petrol car, which is instant, you might spend around five minutes in the fuel pump, but you're still spending around four thousand eight hundred bucks to make a full tank of a Tigor right now with the current cost. That's hundred and twenty rupees per liter. That's into 40 liters of fuel tank that you have in the Tigo. That's around 4,800 bucks at the minimum that you will spend. That's to a full tank. But if you compare the same cost to the Tigo EV, you can charge the full battery in about an hour, but at an effective cost of 350 rupees. That being said, the cost for charging your EV is even going to go lower. So you might just charge your car. From a zero to a hundred percent in maybe around two hundred and fifty rupees to two hundred rupees, very soon. Yes, the time is still a factor that we cannot beat unless we have swappable batteries for cars. But then we are still working on the technology front for EVs, and the charging times are reducing significantly. But then there is one factor which is the biggest turnoff of a factor for most of these people, and that's range anxiety. Like even I have the same issue. Even when I'm shooting this car, when I'm shooting this video, I'm constantly looking at the percentage of battery that is left for me to use, and I can't help it because it's there. Even when I'm using my cell phone, I'm that way. You can always charge your car at home with the home chargers that are available with these cars. They cost around three thousand five hundred bucks for installation, and maybe upwards of the kind of wattage that you have or the kind of wiring that is required. Then you have DC fast chargers which are available on route, and even office premises are now installing chargers so that while You are working. Your car is charging downstairs. So by the time you have to leave for your home, your car is fully charged. If you are planning to do long distance trips with these cars, it's quite possible. Like in this case, the Tata's app will suggest multiple locations where you can charge your car when you're on route to a location, and it will also tell you that before you reach that point, what is the percentage of charge that you'll have. So if you have that anxiety, you will not have that. It will help it. The only problem with that method still. Is the amount of time that you'll take. But then, if you're doing this road trip as a leisure thing, you can always use that time, that charging time, to refresh yourself. Go and visit the restroom, buy some food, just stretch around, and then you're fresh again for the journey ahead. Yes, there are pros and cons to it. But then, if you're saying that you're going to be driving for leisure, I think those much-needed breaks are doable. There is also one hidden cost when it comes to purchasing an EV or an ICE car. That is insurance. Currently, the insurance for the EV cars is around 10% more as compared to the IC counterparts, but you do get around 30 to 40% of discount on third-party insurance. But if that's not much of a promising thing for you, currently all the EV cars that we have in the market they come with a minimum warranty of five to eight years on the battery pack. So. You don't really need to think about replacing your battery anytime soon. Yes, they do degrade, but then if you have a ongoing warranty on your battery, I don't think you have to worry about it that much. In conclusion, there are two types of benefits that you get if you invest in an electric vehicle. One is short term and the second is a long term. Short term is the lower recharge cost for these vehicles. But in long term, you get low recharge cost. That is, recharge the car, low maintenance cost, and the third one is on the positive side. 
you're driving a car which has zero emissions. So you're not being that old self which has been polluting the environment which you've been doing for decades otherwise. This is Aurelius from Mashable India signing off. You guys have a good evening ahead.